Good afternoon, everyone. Killing the ants and negative thinking and how you stop it in your life. And a lot of people wrote in with questions and comments and, and you know, we know a lot of you were going through really hard times that you have challenges in your life that are overwhelming and a lot of comments about life being fair. And it reminded me, and please don't take this as though I am being callous or cold because I'm not because I'm coming from a very personal place here as I'm going to show you. Um, when I say this, my daughter, it reminded me of my daughter. When my daughter was really small, she would say to me all the time, mommy, it's not fair. Mommy, it's not fair. And I would tell her the same mantra that I taught myself many years ago. Honey, fair is a place in Pomona with bad food and farm animals. Now Pomona is a place near me where they have a big county fair. Um, but my point in teaching her that was I don't want her growing up thinking the world owes her something for no apparent reason. And I want her growing up thinking that she's responsible for the outcomes, that she has control over those outcomes. Whatever her circumstances are, she can make the most of it. And that comes from a really personal place for me because of how rough it was for me growing up in chaos and trauma, drama, no money, you know, very low socioeconomic place. But I had a mom who was amazing at responsibility, at teaching responsibility. And I want to pass that on to my daughter. And, you know, mine ended up being even rougher than, you know, some people's in the sense that I got really physically ill as a result. And I know a lot of you have that same problem because it attacks your immune system. I was one of those kids who was sick all the time. So a lot of the questions that came in last night were how did you overcome between the emotional trauma and the physical illness? How did you overcome and become as successful as you are today? So I want to teach you a little, little trick that, you know, I use something that we teach and that I use personally. And this is about, um, you know, are you waiting for life to be fair? If you're waiting for life to be fair, you're going to be waiting a very long time. But here's the thing. Here are a couple things that I do. Number one, I learned how to be the change. Now I had some great mentors, which is why I like that you're watching this because I believe in mentors. It's powerful. You have to be the change. The minute you think that something should be different, start acting that way, start behaving that way because that's how change is elicited. You, you know, I wish my kids would eat differently. I wish my husband would do something. I wish this, I wish that then you need to do it. Be that example. That's the first thing. The second thing is make the most of your assets. So what do you have? Stop focusing on what you don't have and what you can't do and start, start focusing on what you can do. That's all you can do. So, you know, life may not be fair in giving you what your you know friends or colleagues or whoever has, but you've got something that you can make the most of guaranteed. So make the most of what you have because every positive change that you create is going to help you gain momentum toward another positive change. Hopefully that makes sense. So just keep that momentum moving in a positive direction. Who should do it? You should do it. In other words, the minute you have the thought, someone should do X, Y, and Z. Well, who is someone? If you have the thought someone should do it, that means probably you should do it, or at least you should help figure out a way to get it done. So if you're not capable of doing it, maybe you can help elicit that change and figure out who can help you get it done. So we can't just put responsibility on other people and not take that responsibility for ourselves, for the outcomes of our own lives. And then I always, this is one of the most important questions for me. It's compared to what? When I sank into the pity and the, you know, self-loathing and all of these problems that I went through with depression and when I was really sick and I felt sorry for myself and, um, you know, I learned how to start asking compared to what? Now I was a neurosurgical trauma ICU nurse and I worked in a very high risk hospital where we dealt with some of the sickest people in the world and people were, you know, flown there and all sorts of things. And I saw babies die every day of horrible things in their mother's arms. So when I started feeling sorry for myself, it was stunning. And I started asking myself compared to what my life is terrible compared to what? This situation is terrible compared to what? Compared to 9-11, compared to ISIS. Now I know that sounds a little crazy, but it puts life back in perspective. You need to reframe it. That will help you gain some perspective over what's going on. You just wanna get out of that negative loop so you can now have some energy to move forward. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not to put yourself down. It's so that you have some positive energy to move forward. So I don't want you to be mean to yourself and go, oh, I'm an idiot because I feel bad because I you know, have the situation. It's because we want you to empower yourself to move forward. Remember, victims can't win. So that is the whole point in this. I want you to not be a victim. So when someone asks me about 
you know, making some of the positive changes in my life. One thing my mom was awesome at teaching me, no matter how bad our situation was, victims can never win. So I always knew I could never be a victim. I had to fight like hell. That was the other thing she taught me, fight like hell and quit when you're dead. <laughs> Those were things my mother literally told me. Um, so four questions that can help you turn anything around. And this is something I love. Byron Katie, a dear friend of ours, um, you know, I think I, I actually credit her with really saving me at a really difficult time in my life emotionally, teaching me this hygiene and in such a simple way. Four questions by Byron Katie. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I use a lot of people, you know, our patients and others, um, but today I'm going to use myself and bring this a little closer. You can see it. Um, I'm going to use myself because this is a thought I had a lot. It's not fair that I was always sick and that I got cancer. So I was always sick as a kid. It's not fair. And you have to be careful not to add more. You can't stack. It has to be one thought that you're working on. You can't stack them. So I would, you can go down this rabbit hole really quickly. It's not fair that I grew up, you know, in trauma, drama, chaos, and that led me to become sick. No, those are like separate questions. You have to work on one question or one thought rather. So it's not fair that I was always sick and had cancer. So you ask yourself, first of all, is it true? Almost always people say yes. That's like the automatic response because you have the thought. So the answer is yes. The second question, can I absolutely know without a doubt 100% that it's true? Like more than God, can I know that it's true that it's not fair? Mm, maybe not more than God. <laughs> I actually am not 100% sure that it is 100% true more than God that I shouldn't have gotten sick or that I would, you know, I don't know. So you just crack the thought a little bit. Now some people will say yes, okay? I said no, but some people say yes and don't argue. Just don't argue with the thought. Just move to the next one. How do I feel when I have the thought that it's not fair, that I was sick all the time? Now, this is where I want you to spend time and dig into it. So how do I feel when I have the thought? I would get depressed. I would feel debilitated. I would feel um, demoralized, immobile, not able to get out of bed. I felt unworthy. I felt less than others. I felt um, paralyzed. I felt angry. I felt um, just mad at everything and everyone. And I was upset that my friends were going to college and I was not, and that I had medical bills and had to file bankruptcy. I mean, the list goes on. I want you to really think about it. Well, how does it make you feel? But then a really important little sub question, how did I treat myself and how did I treat others? I isolated from other people, which was bad for myself and other people. So I would isolate, I would beat myself up. I would, I would try really hard to work out and just beat myself up physically. I would beat myself up emotionally trying to be something that I couldn't be at the time. And I would um, berate myself for not being more, for not being better. I was angry at my body for betraying me. And then, um, you know, I didn't want people near me because I felt like a failure. So isolation is one of the worst things we can do to ourselves. Loneliness kills people, like honestly kills people. So then you go to the next question, who would I be without the thought? If I could never think the thought, couldn't even enter my mind, blocked. Who would I be without the thought? For me, peaceful. I'd be free. Wow, that's huge. I'd be free and I would be peaceful if I could never think the thought of how unfair it was. I'd be more open and available to ideas to fix it. I would be, I'd have more energy to do something good, to help myself. Um, you know, just a whole list of things would come up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the self-loathing. I would actually kind of like myself. Wow, what a concept. Um, so all of this stuff comes up. Maybe I would even consider going to school and doing something a little different. Maybe my original plans weren't gonna be what, they, what I intended, but maybe there's a whole other world outside that I could open up to. That's the idea, right? So who would I be without the thought? It just opens up the possibilities. Finally, you want to turn, this is really powerful, turn the thought around to its opposite and this is where it's really powerful. So to its opposite, it's not fair that I got cancer. Well, it's fair that I got cancer. Hmm, probably doesn't feel quite right, but there's usually more than one turn around. Yes, it is fair that I got cancer. I don't know. So in my case, I was really young. I was sick all the time. Probably not the right turnaround. So you always look for another turnaround. It's not fair that I got cancer. So it is fair that I got cancer. So another turnaround could be, well, it's not fair that
that others get cancer, you know, why am I better than others? And you start thinking of these turnarounds. And finally, you know, you come to some conclusion and what you do is it's like, okay, it's not fair that I, that, you know, it's not fair that I got cancer and that I got sick. Well, maybe it's not fair that I am treating myself in a way that's making me sick. And that was my final turnaround. So yeah, it's not fair that I got cancer, but it's not fair that I'm treating myself in a way that makes me sick. Because guess what? Part of why I was so sick growing up was all the trauma, drama, chaos, and the anger and the you know things going on around me that made me sick. And now here I am treating myself as bad or worse than some of those situations. So it's not fair to me that I am doing this to myself now and not loving myself. And that was my final turnaround. And that was really powerful. And then you give yourself three examples. I had a thousand, I didn't need to give myself three. I had a thousand, but give yourself three examples. And all of a sudden I realized, wow, I've been more mean to myself than other people have. So this for me is really powerful. Um, I actually, someone wrote to me and said, how did you overcome? Um, I, I think someone misunderstood and thought that maybe my home was physically abusive. It wasn't, I had an amazing mother. The problem was we were very poor and she worked all the time and was gone. So that opened up a door for some other bad things to happen. There was a lot of chaos and drama in my home. Um, so she was a caretaker for many people. So I want to just make that clear. I had an amazing mother who taught responsibility, who taught that you have control over your life, that if you don't take control over the outcome, like you're going to be very unhappy with the results because the world doesn't owe you anything. So I just wanted to pass that on to you. When someone asked me, what is it that you can do? This is one of the simple techniques that I use. I am a seeker, according to my husband. I reach out, I seek, I look for mentors. I am always in some class, seminar, or reading a book, or you know, doing something, because I do want to make myself better. And, and then I want to pass it on. Why? Because caring creates resilience, and studies actually show that. You live longer and your stress doesn't affect you as negatively if you pass it on, if you're taking care of other people and loving other people, because we're a pair-bonded species, and it boosts our oxyto oxytocin. So I hope this was helpful in some way. If you're struggling a little bit, let me know because that helps my oxytocin. Leave me some comments and share it if it's helpful. Love you guys and I will talk to you again in the live chat next week. Take care. Bye-bye.